Welcome to the Dr. Bud Gill Podcast. I couldn't be more excited to have my buddy here, Wes Watson, from the West Coast join us. Um, Wes is an incredibly intense, and I think that's an understatement, an inspirational guy, man. Uh, <laughs> you, 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 you certainly have, man. Um, so for those of you who aren't familiar with Wes, which you, know, you probably should be because he's everywhere, um, he is an online coach, and you know people will see him and see his profile. He's fucking jacked, and think that he's an online fitness coach, and he is. But there's so much more to it. He's kind of a fitness coach that coaches folks from the inside out, from the mind out, and that's something that I actually think is very unique. And that's kind of what compelled me uh, to want to get to know you better. And we're going to get into all that sort of stuff. Um, he's also uh, a huge YouTube personality. He's got a crazy YouTube channel, which is just totally fascinating. Uh, it's, it's called GP Pen Penitentiary Life. And it basically doc he basically tells stories about his 10 years in prison, which are, I mean, it, insane. He's been through so much and it's so inspiring just to see the success and, you know, your hustle. And, uh, you know, I just appreciate you so much, man, for taking the time to speak with me, man. I like in uh, interviews and Q and A's and stuff. I hold them with my community every Saturday, Saturday and Sunday, and I do Zoom calls with my clients. But I mean, I love being in the moment, that flow state when we're purely existing right there. All this, this like life and the real world and everything, I've detached from it so long ago that the only pain I know is when I try to like live this life that society has set for everyone. But this, this exchange and with my clients and in the moment of creation, the flow state that's building the future we want, the, pre the present that's building the future we want, that's the only place where I know the true escape, the true inner peace that we're all after, that we don't know we're after. But um, yeah, we, we have mounted some success and stuff, but the chase of that always takes me away from what I've known to be our true essence and our true state that humans are supposed to exist in, which is flow, which is inner peace, which is not knowing time as it passes by. And as we get into this interview, we'll get there to where we're just existing and, and vibing off of each other. And uh, that's, that's what I did the whole time in prison. There was no future. There was no past. They were both too painful. So I just existed in the present state and really constructed some habits and an individual that could create the external world around himself through just massacring the present and stacking those wins daily to master each day. You know, it's, it's amazing. Cause a lot of times, like, you know, when I listen to you speak, it's, uh, it's pulling from, you know, a, a lot of, a lot of books and stuff that, that I've read. And I know like you're a big quote guy. Um, and like, you know, they're, you're really living those things though. So it's not that you're like, you know, it's not this sort of abstract concept that you're just putting out into the world. It's something that you've actually come to a conclusion about and it allows you to live a very present life. It's very obvious. Like even when I watch your Instagram stories and you know, where you're just speaking directly into the camera, I mean, those are so engaging because it's obvious how, how present you are, man. And uh, we're going to get into actually how you became so evolved. And, you know, I kind of want to start from the beginning if that's okay with you and yeah, work our way through, man. So I just, I mean, you'll fill in the gaps. I mean, obviously I know the stuff that's public about you. Um, you know, you grew up in the San Diego, Southern California area. You actually came from like a loving household. You know, you had a mom and a dad from what I understand that your dad was a hardworking guy. Your mom was a great, great mother. Um, but something that was lacking was there was always a sort of a struggle for money. Like, you know, like, you know, kind of meeting the ends meet by the end of the month, getting the rent check in, having enough money to put proper food on the table, all of those, you know, life struggles that so many people are dealing with right now. And, you know, through that, your sort of internal hustle started to develop, you know, it's, you had the things maybe that you needed most of mostly what you needed, but you never were able to have, you know, there was never extra to have the things that you may have wanted. And, uh, you know, that well, drove what, you, go ahead. I'm sorry. What I, what I, what I know is that the energy, your parents could not even really be talking about it to you. They think they could have it under wraps and they're just like struggling about money internally, but the energy they're putting off about this money struggle is affecting you as a kid growing up. You don't notice it. And it causes a sense of trauma in us to where we're like, how do I make my parents feel better? Like, how do I make this okay? And um, I started hustling at 11 years old. I mean, by the time I was 16, I literally, by, by the time I was 16, I bought like my dream truck cash. I've never had, like, I've never had a job for one day in my life. I've never had a job ever. I went from straight hustling to the penitentiary, but in between there's a massive gap. So 
I, I went and bought my dream truck at 16 cash right off the lot, like $50,000 lifted truck, everything like that. And I was just so externally motivated to solve these problems that I knew the biggest problem was, was money. But there was two pillars of issues of myself. I didn't like my physical body and there was money problems. So these essentially like painful ass things for a kid growing up that his parents were always tripping about money and he didn't like his body became the prerequisite to his essentially him finding his purpose. So I would take, I took the, the pain from that to learn how to hustle. And um, I did it the wrong way. I, I watched all the movies. I, I sold all the drugs. I, I literally pushed big ass packs of weed. And I mean, we used to weigh our money. I mean, people show money counts and shit on, um, on movies. And I just laugh at that. Like you throw a 50 stack of twenties on a scale and you, you throw a thousand dollars in twenties on a scale and it weighs 50 grams. You don't sit there and run through a money counter. Like this is just the stupidest thing I've ever seen. So here we are 50, 50, 50, 50, band it up. Millions of dollars throughout our adolescence growing up. I lived in the best tower right down the street before I went to prison, the Harbor Club downtown. Had a Range Rover, went to the club every night, was an idiot, just sought pleasure in all these ways and was half-assing my workout and then had no true purpose, just thought that getting money was okay. And then this landed me in the penitentiary. Once I was in the penitentiary, I still had the same drive, still had the same internal issues, the way my body looked, uh, the desire for money because it was just instilled in me at a young age that there was enough, there's not gonna be enough. So I just saw how fraudulent we went about it and that I was smart enough to do it the right way if I, was, if I thought I was so fucking smart that I might as well do it the right way this time and figure it all out. And I just sat down for a long time looking at what I didn't like in society and then use deductive reasoning. A lot of people always look at what they're doing right and that's the problem. I only see what remains to be done. Like I don't give a fuck what you're doing right. I see what remains to be done. And that's why I work with big CEOs and people who are really successful and I'm really successful myself because I don't wake up in the morning and say, oh, I got a six pack, I'm jacked, I'm this, I'm that. I really look at what my problems are. It's like, Wes, you still have a negative internal dialogue plaguing you. Wes, you still need to do this. You need to do that. I'm never satisfied. And a lot of people think that's like a, a dire way to live to where you're never happy, but happily dissatisfied is a great place. And relentlessness and discontent are the are mandatory for constant progression. Man, that was you, you had a lot I gotta you said a lot right there that that I, I want to kind of sift through a little bit. Um, so first it's going back when you, were you dealing weed when you were 11 years old? Was that like your first, Yeah, I started off with weed. I just wanted to smoke for free. I, everyone just, I just want to smoke for free. And then you realize you can make a little bit of money and then it turns into, um, getting ounces and then pounds. And, you know, by the time I'm 16, I'm pushing bigger packs at the time I'm 17, 18, I'm getting huge packs from out of, out of country, out of state, everything. And, um, and then I go to prison and I'd come out and it's legal. But the whole know, thing is, is uh, it, was, big... it wasn't then. It wasn't then. And what I went to prison for was a, a big weed deal gone wrong where some violence happened. Yeah. So just so did you did you deal all did you go did you graduate high school? Yeah, I graduated high school. I just I went to like the secondary high school because I was just like I, by then I was driving an Escalade to high school. And like people were trying to come right up, now. yeah. People were trying to come up to my car, like, "Hey, let me smoke with you. I get the fuck out of here. You're blowing up the spot." Like I was just way ahead of my time always. And by the time I was like fresh out of high school, I had a Range Rover. I mean, I was right. just, I already have. I was the only person who had their own place, like in high school. I was just, I was looking up my credit score at 14. Like at 14, I was studying how to have a good credit score. It was just really that heavy on me that my parents were like, money's going to solve the problem. Money's going to solve the problem. And they're not wrong. They just didn't, they didn't know that it's about personal development. If you wouldn't work to develop this individual who's valuable, success wouldn't chase you. The old fucking system was that you just chase money all day. No. And the whole thing is, is what I teach people in my program is you become valuable. You develop the, your personal development, your success will never outweigh your personal development. It's something track the person you've become. And, the, and everybody thinks it's like a hack, but I'm instilling habits. There's no hack here. Like you get on my program and the people who slaughtered in my program, I've instilled habits in them that are the habits of a successful person. Now I show every day on my Instagram, my habits. If someone can't see my fucking habits, and realize this is how millionaires and very successful people build 
the confidence, the wealth and everything to have this drive, they're tripping. And they just, they really believe that there's some victim who can't do it themselves and Wes is superior. No, he's not. He just never quit. Yeah, that, that's, so, that's so well said, man. Um, and you kind of see, this is something I talked to Bedros about as well. Like I was talking about his morning routine and you know, one of the things that he said was like, well, you know, your, my morning routine is probably not that different than your morning routine or other people who are successful. It's, you know, it's all about, like you said, I love that line, stacking wins and like, you know, getting your one win a day that gets you one step closer to your goal. We're going to get, we're going to get all into that. We're going to get deep heavy into that, but I kind of want to, again, just kind of see how your process actually evolved. So, you know, you're in high school, you're making all this money, you know, you're in your early, you know, your late teens, graduate high school, twenties, you're just killing it. Were your parents ever like, Wes, like, how do you have so much money? Like, Oh yeah. One time they came, I had this house in Encinitas. It was like, it was like 1.8 million. And I had a condo down here. And uh, they're like, dude, do you think you're like Scarface or something? Like, what the fuck? I'm like, oh, no, no, I just always downplayed everything. I knew I was going to get busted. Like, I lived that life of like any day it's going to happen. And that's just how I lived. I mean, I, I really, I kind of validated myself in that stupid manner of that I was like gangster. And, um, and uh, I, you know, I was with the business. And it's that fake card. I call it fake card. Like, you do everything easy, but you have this external fucking vision or this exterior of someone who's tough and hard. And that's what I laugh about now, like the guys out here where they'll go buy all their tattoos off the wall at the shop and then they're physically soft, but they think they fucking put on this costume where they're hard. And it's like, dude, that's not even what hard is. Hard is everything that's hardest for you. And, and so what I teach people is whatever's hardest for you is hard. That's what builds the pride in you. So for me, being a naturally intense, just crazy individual, what was hardest for me was building habits on the other side of my weakness, which was being more compassionate, being more grateful, being just better to everyone in general and a, a more quality guy, like just in all around. And I mean, the people who are, some people are naturally like that and they need a little bit of what I got. They need to be a little more assertive. They need to have more confidence. They need to walk in that room and say, here I am. Instead of being that person who always walks the room and says, there you are. They need to step the fuck up in their aspects because everybody's got their gifts. Our superpower is our own personality who we are you know and people don't harness that they'll see some kids said oh i wish i would uh be able to see you in prison it's entertaining i said this ain't about fucking entertainment this is about you creating the story of your life that you're proud of people tell me all day long like man your story's crazy because i did I, I was in prison three years ago now i'm in the best penthouse best unit downtown i have a lamborghini a rolls royce i fucking have a mercedes s class i have millions of dollars and i mean the thing i i help millions of people across the world we have 52 million views on gp penitentiary life youtube channel and guess what i couldn't give a fuck about that because the only thing that frees me from my pain in my chest that i have every day is this is this is is, is helping someone else so i tell everyone that the only thing we're supposed to do in this life is pinpoint our pain inside and help others alleviate them of theirs. And it's the only thing that works for me. I, I, I have everything, but I'm still wake up every day plagued with negative internal thoughts. And I crush those every day by stacking my wins with my morning process. And I'm so sick of everybody with their fake ass diagnoses of these diseases that are only notifications. I mean, there's no such thing as anxiety, motherfucker. There's no such thing as depression, fuck all that shit. It's a notification to preserve yourself. It doesn't exist in the penitentiary. People in the penitentiary do not have anxiety because they can't have it. You can't get a pill for it. You have to go do fucking push-ups. And guess what? When you go crush those push-ups and you're in flow state, you're not anxious no more. No one's ever been running a marathon and be like, man, I'm really having anxiety right now. It's because you're sitting on your fucking ass and you're just letting a scenario fucking, it's a, it's a, you, you probably consumed a bunch of caffeine. You consumed a bunch of carbohydrates. You asked your body for all this energy. And then you fucking sat there. You didn't flip those negative thoughts into positive ones, gain that PMA, and you just let it bounce around inside of you. I just, I've never been in the middle of a crazy workout, never been in an engaging conversation and ever drifted into the future or, or the past in a negative way. And that's what the pain, depression is the pain of the past in a negative way. And anxiety is the pain of the future as we're going there. And that's, the notification from above to tell us stay present you're not you're not there yet you're not back here you're not there you're powerful here and so that's the notification to get the fuck up and preserve ourselves with action i love that man it's powerful i mean the whole thing is, is mindset training is is 
imagining scenarios that they, these, it's all imagination. You're believing and trusting in a core belief, a system, a value, or anything that will get you towards your goal. So if you really want to believe that you're so fucked up, like you're so fucked up that you need these pills and they're the only thing that helps you, then I, you can go ahead and believe that. Or you can believe that if you get the fuck up right when you're feeling anxious and you just murder a workout, and then you start to habitually notice that that neurological pathway is created where you run to, to growth instead of running to pills, you're like, whoa, this works every time. Shit, maybe I have to work out three times a day for 20 minutes just to negate that an anxious feeling that I get. And guess what the byproduct of that is? A great body. Guess what the byproduct of the pill is? Not one and some worse problems. I mean, a, a doctor, you should, go, you should go in and the bottle of pills, it should be like, oh, I'm anxious. I have anxiety. You should hand you a bottle and you open the bottle and there's a tag in it that has like some form of workout you could do on the floor in front of you. And you pull it open and this is your fucking pill that you take for today. You owe me 300 burpees. And I guarantee people would start to realize that they have the cure to every fucking thing that ails them already within them. And this other shit was created for somebody else's game, not yours. Hard work's the hard part. Yeah. Yeah, but there's yeah. nothing hard. We don't even use that word. Yeah. Or no, just no, what course. must be done. Yeah. I, I, I couldn't agree with that more, man. Uh, I'm so, so, sorry, sorry to keep taking it back, but I just want to like, so did your parents know you were dealing drugs? Uh, you know, I've, I don't want to throw them under the bus, man. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Enough said. I'm sure, I'm sure every, I mean, the cops knew everybody, everybody knew like, hey, oh, yeah. there's that, there's that dude. I mean, what, how the fuck else does he have, have a, a black Range Rover on black 24s last yeah. week? He had a black Escalade on Chrome 23s next week. He has a white Range Rover on white 24s. They were all, we were all fucking, it was all obvious. Right. You know, my friends have Bentleys at the time on the yeah. same color rims like it's just ridiculous now they probably still think i'm a drug dealer yeah well now yeah now, now you're doing it the legit way um so so i paid, you get I paid a, a shitload of taxes this year i'll tell you that yeah no, that's good that means you're making <laughs> a lot of money that's great i love helping people <laughs> so when you when how broke, old were you when you... people broke people are selfish they just don't get it they don't help anybody how can a broke person help anyone broke emotionally broke financially you can't help nobody but yourself hey man you when you're right, you're right. Um, I mean, the, the hard truths are what they need. Just, just fucking, what's up, dude? Get up. You ain't no victim, homeboy. Get your ass up. Well, I have to say, you know, that's kind of the, that's that's the difference in your in, in your content. You know, it really is like a slap in the face for folks who are looking for the easy way out. You know, like really, it's all about. It really is all about. You know, getting up early and start stacking your wins from the second you get up, but not hitting the snooze button just having a routine doing the things that you need to do and like you know, like i said those you stack those wins that's anyone who's successful has stacked wins every day no matter See, what my, my my very first win for me with my personality for me to structure and get my aim for the day is different than somebody else's because i'm naturally intense i'll shark on a motherfucker like i don't have no problem telling anybody what's up so the thing is is for me the first thing i have to tell myself is how can i best serve everybody today this is how I get my aim. The first thing that pops in my head is how can I best serve everyone today? That takes me from any victim fucking big victim shirts, chair sitting shit to I'm straight in abundance. I'm in control. I'm the leader. How can I serve you? I'm totally willing to do whatever it takes and, uh, and doesn't let me start to feel used or shark on people or try to take too much. And it just makes me humble. That's what I need. And that's my personality. So I create the habits that I need on the other side of my weakness. My weakness is I'm too assertive. I get too up and shit. And so I have to check that. Other, most people have the opposite. They're too nice. They get walked all over and they need a little bit of, so, of what I got, which is nah, fuck that. You know, a little bit of hard truths and really walking them, really personifying the teaching. A lot of people know these answers, but to know and not to do is not to know. So these motherfuckers make me sick. You got the fat ass dude up there telling me shit about how I'm gonna change my life and we, we know for damn sure he woke up this morning and didn't listen to his own motherfucking self. So I ain't listening to him. I can't even listen to a fat person. I'm not gonna. He don't listen to himself. I'm done. I'm walking out. There's plenty of mentors of mine that get it. They're in shape. They're physically fit. They're servants of others. And they're, they're, they, they love to do it. Like, I'm going to go coach people on the street after this. I go pull up in my Rolls or my Lambo, and I just park somewhere, and I just get some coffee, and someone will come by and be like, oh, Wes, or there'll be, or someone will come by and just, I'll sense someone. And I'll just sense the pain in them. 
and then tell them what they need. You know, I just know what they need. Cause I've been, we've both, and we've all, any successful person who's been at the top, bottom, whatever the fuck, I've been ungrateful in this penthouse. I've been grateful in this penthouse. I've been ungrateful in a prison cell and I've been grateful in a prison cell and everywhere in between. So anyone I come across on any increment of the spectrum, I know exactly what they need to get where they got to go. I know exactly what they need, but they're not going to see it because they're trying to have their growth handed to them how they want it. And it ain't coming that way. It's coming the exact opposite package. Your growth don't come how you fucking want it in this life. Hey man, yeah, I mean, <laughs> again, I agree with that, all that, man. Um, how old were you when you went into prison? I went, I think I went in at like 24 or 25 24. Like, or 23 or so. I got out at uh-huh. 33 or 34. I don't even know. I, I don't know how old I am. Like, I don't fucking know. I'm, I'm like 37, 38. Okay. I was born, I was born in 83, November 26. How fucking right, old so am I? That's how much I little, I give a fuck about that. I run on that, that billionaire mentality where I wear the same clothes every day. I don't give a shit about much else other than this internal state that we're truly working on all the time, this growth. I mean, we can only make so many decisions a day. People are making the wrong ones. I mean, just set your breakfast, set your meals throughout the day, set your clothes, set your routine, and then realize that you'll start to travel within a lot instead of just living in the external. Oh, should, should I wear these shoes? Oh, maybe pancakes today. And quit wasting your decisions. You ain't got that many motherfuckers. Yeah. Unless yeah, it's, it's funny. What car you're gonna, what car you're gonna drive or what, what, what. Yeah. Um, so. You know, when when you went into prison, uh, and you'll correct me if I'm wrong, it's you know you obviously have an abundance based mindset right now. Like the world is abundant, you have a tremendous amount of gratitude, um, and you're also serving a lot of people. When you went into prison, would you say that you had a scarcity mindset and you were just accumulating things, and you know, or do you just oh, didn't pay any mind to it? No, I just was like, uh, I was just like, I was just confused. You know, I just I literally was like everybody else who thinks. Like stuff is going to solve their problems. You know, like I really didn't see I was the problem. Like you, you don't have money. No one has business problems. They have life problems that transfer into their business. Like everyone's got, just got bad fucking habits. If you get rid of your bad habits and you pick up good ones, you'll realize that you won't have any of these problems. I mean, it's just what it is. And I had bad habits. I was drinking. I was fuck. When I got busted, I was drinking, I was drinking and doing meth. And like smoking weed and all the other shit was like nothing. Like even the girl I was with at the time was like, oh, meth is like a cup of coffee because she was on fucking heroin. Like it was just like nothing. Like I would drink handles of vodka all day and just smoke speed. And I was just a lunatic. Like I was fucking whacked out. And um, and I really just came to in prison. I was like, man, there's no, I'm really not getting out. And that day they handcuffed me. I didn't get out for 10 years. And um, I really thought in the first like seven months, like, no, I can bail out, like, get me out. They're like, no, you have no bail. And, um, and I went to trial and I lost. I mean, went, I went to trial because I had a joint suspension in another county. So they would, the plea they were giving me was bullshit because they, uh, they, um, they wouldn't run the charges concurrently. So I had a five-year joint suspension for a weed sales case. I got pulled over in Orange County in my Range Rover with like 12 pounds. It, to me, that was like a 20 sack at the time. I didn't give a fuck. And um, so then I, it just ended up all this shit. I just all happened for a reason. Like life happened for me. I'm the true advocate of that. I even had a recent like massive life altering event happen to me right now. And everybody saw it take place and has seen it. And it didn't shake me at all. Because the thing is, is yeah, it hurts. But I just keep moving forward. I put all my energy into creating the future that, that I need. You know, I'm not, I don't dwell on the past. And, and I don't, I don't get anxious about the future. I mean, actually, uh, I mean, Action alleviates anxiety and, and, uh, and um, inaction breeds fear and doubt. And then the thing is, is I just don't do that. I just, I have a perfect process and a plan and I stick to it daily. And I, and then I operate from abundance. The, the thing is, is if I'm sitting here and I'm waiting for something to happen in business and life or whatever, and I'm trying to force it, I'm starting to get in that scarcity mindset. I'm starting to be, oh, am I ever, am I still going to make this much money every day? Like, is this going to be my life? I don't know. And I'm like, Wes, what are you doing? That's the most ungrateful state you could be in. I immediately address the universe. I'm like, hey, my bad. I get what you're trying to teach me. I go get into flow state in something completely different, separated from that uh, that sale or that topic or that thing that I'm tripping on. 
And the second I go detach from that state of scarcity, I go get back in the flow state and something as small as a workout, shaving, anything tiny that just removes me from the event. The thing I was waiting for happens. It's just like ding. And I, I did a lot of the top guys I know and I, we deal with, we operate our businesses morally from a standpoint of if a man is right, his world will be right. Now, once you have a system working, you understand business, you understand life, and you realize you're not going to get away with anything and karmic debt's real, then you really have to just, you're minding your P's and Q's and, and you're, you're accountable to not just your actions because a, a juvenile is accountable to his actions. I won't hit people no more. I'm not going to drink and I'm going to the gym and eating better. Yeah, a lot of everyone, everything starts off juvenile. They're, we're accountable to our actions, but I teach people to step up this pyramid of, of accountability, which I speak of and teach. And the, the the bottom is actions. And most people never pull off those actions. New Year's resolutions. They're just all, I got to do this. I got to do this. Well, what happens after you do this consistently and they're non-negotiable, your actions, you work out every day, you take care of yourself, you do all this, you don't drink, you don't do this, you eat this way. Well, then what happens now as you drift up to being accountable to your core beliefs, your, your, your self-talk, your internal dialogue. So now you exist within, you're right here. And you're just existing within. And now your core beliefs that you run off, which can be very simple, smash all negotiations with you siding with not following through on your actions. And then the height of that is once you've already had your core beliefs set for so fucking long, they're solidified within you, which mine are. I, I just exist in all energy exchange. And so I can, I pay karmic debt for even bad energy and I notice it and people don't notice this. So even I go to like a tanning salon the other day and the lady's like, do you have your goggles? I'm like, what? You never asked me for my goggles. And I'm not rude to her at all. I'm just like, okay, I, I'm just going to go. And so I just go. But what I didn't, what people don't realize is I was giving her negative energy from inside to her. And um, I didn't, wasn't rude. I didn't do nothing wrong. I didn't call her a bitch. I didn't know like that. But I was still attached to that event for hours and hours and hours later because I did give her negative energy. And what people don't realize is that lapse in, in clarity is what their problem is. So they're always fucking with people. Someone's, oh, they're always talking shit. They always have negative thoughts about people. They're always giving bad energy. They're, they're not even that high up. They're just acting bad. They're always drinking, doing drugs, being idiots, being violent. And so they're paying for karmic debt from the bottom of the pyramid to the top. And so they never have true clarity. Once you get true clarity, your purpose becomes, your, your vision becomes so clear and your purpose is obvious. And they don't just never get that until they remove everything that's causing the karmic debt in their life. I love that, man. I mean, I literally, I could take every one of like your answers and just like turn it into like a friggin' book, man. Um, so there's so there's a couple of things that you said that I do want to touch on. Um, so one is I love, you know, you're really in tune with just being in flow state, and whatever you're doing, which basically means that you're just present. It's almost, you're, 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 you're functioning on a subconscious level. Like you're just so in tune that you don't even have to think about what you're doing. It's just like you're, it's just one state of being. And, and, and I love that. That's, you know, everyone operates best when, and everyone's been in that flow state at some point doing whatever it is that, that they do or something that they love. And, you know, I love that you're always chasing that. And you do talk about that a lot in, in, your, in your posts and stuff, which I think is great. The other thing I want to touch on is you, you mentioned core values a lot. And I can tell you like, for me personally, I was existing, but until I actually really defined what my core values were, and I was always abiding by what those core values were, but sort of in a very vague type of manner, you know, like until I actually sat down one day, this was just a few years ago, believe it or not, that I did this. And I said, okay, what are the four things that define what I'm all about and, and, and the type of people I want to be around and what means the most to me in life? So for me, mine are care and compassion, integrity, accountability, attention to detail. Those are my four core values. And those basically dictate every single aspect of my life, whether it's my work and seeing patients or working out or my diet or whatever the case may be. All of those things are, you know, guide my life. What are like your my, core my values? Core, my, my core principles for like my program and stuff and that, that I live by is purpose over pleasure. Leaders do more creating assets. And basically that, that's basically it. I mean, it's just, I have so many that I don't really, I kind of, I, I teach by saturation and, uh, and by truly just people come into my program and they saturate themselves in this, just this system that works so well because it just, it really touches them because the, the emotions there, the energy's there. I really am in pain all the time. So I really live it with them. I'm going through it. 
the people who aren't experiencing pain still that have they're they're seeking too much pleasure and they're they're just drowned out i mean they just don't realize that their connection's not pure i mean if i ate any carbs today i would have not came across the way i do like i i starve myself to come across this way i i i purposely put myself through stuff massive suffering because suffering is the sole origin of consciousness if i start to victimize too much i'll break myself off with the most painful workout i can to get back to where i need to be and what i tell people is what i teach is the is the modern day uh self-discovery process which they've done since the dawn of time at the in the dawn of, i i found it in prison because we kind of just do it in prison with our politics but um since the dawn of time people have gone on long treks they they seek isolation and they fast and this is how you like find God, find yourself, find the universe, find creation attached to infinite intelligence. And I have my own modern way of that. We are staying in a caloric deficit. If that's our goal right then to drop body fat, look better. We're staying in that caloric deficit. We're waking early, reading and journaling and staying in a state of uh, solitude with by ourselves alone in the morning. And what we do is we reflect on regret in the morning to really give a, a bullseye point of what we need to change and then um the, the workouts so the workout is like the, the enduring trek but the, it's that simple to, to get your aim through the day and then you pick your zone of genius and you make it your career everybody's after the money not the fucking not what puts them in flow state so as soon as they're not making the right amount of money they tap out and give up now they've tried 90 things their whole life and nothing really worked and 15 years into it you'll be the best That's, it's, it's so true, man. It's really that, that consist, being consistent, being perseverant, and like you're just trusting yourself. Consistency you're, and comprehension. Because that's what I, I teach people. I teach people a lot that a lot, the, the most common thing on the planet is consistency with very little results. So I teach people comprehension has to be yeah. a huge part of it. They're not bigger than consistency. You should almost understand it before you're way consistent. Because the, the point is, is there's so many people who show up to the gym and they don't look like me. There's so many people who show up to a job and don't get the pay they want. There's so many people in relationships they don't like. I mean, there's more people who are consistently showing up and not getting their results in this life than people who are consistently showing up and getting them. And the reason why people in my program get them is because we comprehend what the fuck we're doing down to the last gram. Because I don't give a fuck. I'm getting my results. I understand this shit. And I will make sure that you understand it. Yeah, I mean, that's it. That's that's the key. I don't know what you're working towards. Um, what, what, so just take taking it back again. When you were in prison, were you when you first got to prison, were you still like using drugs and stuff? Oh yeah, I, I used like for the first little bit. Like I would just smoke a weed. I quit the hard drugs, and uh, I would just smoke a weed and like and drinking some Pruno every now and then, which was like prison homemade wine and shit. And then um, and then like five years into or four years into my prison term. I, re I, I, we were doing our thing in there, whatever people push drugs in there and shit. And then, um, I ended up, uh, I ended up doing like, I drank some wine one day and then, um, and then I did like a bump of some, some meth and then just turned into like a two week bender that was the, the catalyst of my change of my life. And I just went off the deep end for like two weeks. And then I got, I, I ended up getting DP by my own people, which is two people get to whoop my ass because I was out of line. And um, I beat up my bunkie. And then um, earlier in the week, I beat up this other kid. And then the guy, my, the guy who made the call on the yard said that uh, they, they, they both get to DP me, but I get to fight back. So I'm like, oh, I'm going to fuck you guys both up. You know, let's do this. And then, uh, then one just jumped down and grabbed my legs. And I'm like, oh, this is bullshit. And the other one just teed off on me and they fucked me up. But um, that's the rules in there. That's how prison works. And, you know, I wasn't, I was still good. I was still on the main line. I was still GP. I didn't get taken off the line. It's not an offense like that. But um, I was just scarred inside. I was like, man, I'm a bitch. Like, I really just went off the deep end on this drug and then was such a liability. And then that's when I picked up Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. It was the first book I read, like self-help. And, uh, and I, I, I was just ran into Instagram and all this stuff and it was just positive. It felt good to me. I read uh, seven habits. I'm like, Oh yes, this is awesome. And then I read, um, Napoleon Hill outwitting the devil. And then, um, and then I just started reading a few books like that. I've only read a few books and they just resonated with me so much. I read the same books over and over and I really rewrite books. I don't read books. I rewrite them. So I'll read a few pages and I'll rewrite them in my own words and fully understand them, develop them, live them and become them. 
And that's what's different is, and also I would get quote books, like thousand page quote books and I would write them down by hand. It just was, um, they were everything to me. I mean, they, they just gave me freedom. Yeah. I mean, it, it sounds like, you know, you, a lot of folks, and you've said this before in some of the content that I've seen, like some of the podcasts I've seen you on, like you're, it's much more important to actually process what you're reading and, and the, the value that you got out of those three books and actually really internalizing the lessons that are in those books and making them part of like your, of, you know, your, your mindset is a lot better than reading a hundred books and you're just kind of like floating through and, you know, not really getting much out of it. And, you know, I think that's also what, I don't really know you, but from what, what I do know about you is what defines you. It's, it's, you know, what you do has a lot of intent. And I, I think that's what makes you, I mean, you, you look the way you do, I think because of that, um, you think the way you do because of that, you live the way you do because of that. Uh, because everything you do is with intent. It's not just going through the motions. Like, you know, it's the execution of what your goals are. And if you talk, you could talk to 10 really successful people and it's, they're all essentially saying the same thing. Like, you know, you're, you're, you have a very, you know, it's like a real intense, like almost, you know, it's a, in, intimidating, not, not that I'm intimidated by it, but the delivery is like, you know, like hardcore. Oh yeah, we the be- thing I see, I see other people's delivery now, and I'm like, man, I just, I can't even, I can't even side with how soft most delivery is and how not yeah. connected they are. I wait for people to have gaps in their in their train of thought and their confidence to drop, and I just give up on them. And it, they, they, I, too many people drop like who they are in their eye. They're just not really living it. Yeah, like I'm so, real. Yeah. yeah, I'm really living it daily. Like. If you ate too much today, you can't get on this fucking call like this. You eat a bunch of pancakes and try to be really direct and definitive with your answer. You're just going to lay on the fucking couch. And it's how most people like they're trying to just spout out some words with no real feeling behind them. And they're, and other people are really living it, you know? Absolutely, man. It's very evident in your stuff, you know, and, and I really, I really do appreciate that. I like the suffering. I like it. I mean, yeah. I take pleasure in not being pleased. I, that's what people are so stupid. They're like, I thought it was purpose over pleasure, Wes. I'm like, yeah, it's purpose over pleasure. Not no pleasure, stupid. Like, come on, purpose first, purpose over pleasure. Dude, I don't think those earbuds, can, ear, AirPods can handle your intensity, man. It's like, it's, oh, right. it's, it, it's topping out. No, it's, it's great because you're like, you know, you're, you're intense, man. Apple's going to need to up their, uh, uh, up their quality, man. To, to, this ain't even to, nothing. We're not even yelling at you. Obviously, my neighbors. <laughs> luckily, I live at the top of the building, so I only have one neighbor who's worried about me. That's awesome. So they get in the elevator with me, and they they see me, and they're like, they'll be like eight or something. Where are you going, sir? I'm um thirty nine. They're like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's, it's that's, such a good feeling it. to go from it is. literally the rock bottom to where we're at today. And the thing is, is yeah. my goal is to teach everybody that we're not even doing shit. There's plenty of people who do way more for way more people and for their whole family and everybody else. The subpar man has to go. Like these motherfuckers really think it's cool to just go suck down an 18 pack on the weekend when they're broke and then blame it on fucking Corona. Motherfucker, you've been drinking 18 packs every weekend for five years. That's where the money went, dude. It did. It wasn't Corona, it was your poor choices, motherfucker. And you could have adapted and pivoted your fucking business. I get it, a lot of people got burnt. And I, and I, I feel for them, but it's time to make a change. I got burnt many times in my life. I pivoted like a motherfucker. I ain't special. I just wouldn't quit. I didn't blame when it happened. When it happened, did you blame or did you pivot? Blaming ain't going to get you nowhere. Yeah. But it all boils down to accountability, right? Which I know is a big part of your platform, a big part of mine as well. Like, you know, something goes wrong. All right. It went wrong. I'm going to take the heat for it. And I got to make a change and I got to, you know, figure out what the next step is and how, how to, you know, gain success down another road. Um, so what, so it sounds like you're like a midway through your prison sentence is kind of when you had a relevant, uh, a revelation that, you know what, I got to change my ways and the way I've been living is just not really getting me anywhere. I just didn't admire right? who like I we, was. I literally came yeah. up with, a, I read, I think I read somewhere I came up with or whatever. It was just inquire what you admire. And I just started like, I hyper, I oversimplify shit. So I could say acquire what you admire and I could just go along the lines of everything. And I'd be like, I don't want to look like that. I don't want that. I don't want that. That's what I like. That's what I like. And I don't give a fuck what I got to do to get it. 
And, and so it, it, we're just creating this rare man, this man who's just so loyal, this man who just, he doesn't have any vices. He literally just lives for the pleasure of pushing himself and being his best. Just, he doesn't need for anything. I mean, and everything that he has, it, he just, it's just like a byproduct of the true validation he has for his, his internal attributes that got it. So it don't matter if he loses it, he'll get it back in another way because it's the assets that got it, not some hack or he fell upon something. Were, were you jacked like when you hit, when you went into prison? No, I, I was like at 14 or 15. I told my mom, I'm like, I'm sick of this shit. Drive me by the bookstore. I went by the bookstore. I got like the Arnold encyclopedia. And I used to like ditch school to go walk to the gym and work out for like three fucking hours. And then this bodybuilder guy was like, Hey dude, you're in here for way too long. Like you don't know what you're doing. And then like, I started to learn over time. And then, um, I was like shopping for my parents as a kid, like getting them, showing them how to eat better. And, and then I would, I started partying a little more and being an idiot and then doing like the half ass shit where you work out somewhat all week, eat like shit and some meals and then, and then drink on the weekends. And you're like that halfway, like, okay, buff dude, who's not really in shape, who like should be, but doesn't get that he's a half ass motherfucker. And, uh, Finally, I just said, you know what? I'm just going to do everything 100%. And once I did that and I got rid of all vices and then um, quit quit accumulating karmic debt in so many ways, just complete clarity was, was – my mind was completely clear and I knew what I had to do. I knew my purpose and I knew my purpose and all our purpose and what I say life's purpose is for everyone, even you, is to create the man you admire in all ways to just give him away. So what I'm doing is creating this man that I admire in all ways. And I'm giving him to the world. And the thing is, is that resonates with a lot of people. There's so many fucking people on the internet that if you're doing this, so many people are going to be like, I like that too. And then you're going to just say, we're trying to be better. You know how many messages I get a day? Like we have 52 million views or something. And it's like, literally, I don't care who you are. If you watch one of those videos, it did something and gave you something or else you're just a fucking liar. Yeah, absolutely, man. I mean, like I said, your message is really, really genuine. Um, so, so you were sound, just kind of getting back to the fitness stuff because I, I really do think fitness is a real barometer of how motivated somebody is, and it really speaks to their mindset. Like you know, you can't buy a good body, you can't buy a good physique. You, you got to put the work in. That's the only way to do it. You got to eat right. You got to get your workouts in. You got to get your daily wins to get you in shape. And I, I learned that you know I was a skinny fat until uh, you know like eight years ago, and I just went balls to the wall in terms of fitness, but that spilled out to every aspect of my life. I was a successful doctor already at the time, but like it just made me much more of a success, successful human. My mind got yeah. sharper, but mine you got just stronger. The way you do anything is the way you do everything. So you're not Absolutely. slacking. You can't yep. just like let yourself fall apart in the physical department and think you're just some miracle worker in the other ones. I mean, it's just not going to happen. Yeah. I do Absolutely. every, I, I take everything as a massive challenge, like the stupidest shit. Like I use the inconvenience factor as my gauge. And that's what I tell people. I'm like, as soon as you're inconvenienced, as soon as you've had too much, as soon as that's so bothersome, that's who you really are. Like that's you. So at that moment, that's when you uphold your character. As soon as it's literally 1030 at night, you've been up since 230 and the wife or the girl or whoever around is like, hey, I need help with this. And that's when you exercise who you are. You don't, it's not when everything's perfect going your way. And you know, okay, yeah, I'll, I, I took care of this. It's like, no, it's who, who you, you're as grateful as you are at the, in, during horrible times. That's so well said, man. Exactly. That's when your character is tested. Um, so when, so just going back to like your midpoint in prison, um, you know, kind of like when you started really kind of finding yourself and building the person that you want to be, was like your last half of, prison a lot like you know what was that like relative to I, was your a, I was as intense as fuck just like the workout dude who's just crushing it i was the swollest dude on the yard just covered in veins jacked and i was just telling everyone like literally how i felt like oh yeah you're a bitch dude like straight up you're a pussy like look at how oh you, you're gonna start 90 days to the house what about today it's like good you got all those tattoos but you're physically fucking soft like i'd be on my people's case because nine times out of ten on the place i got the spot and people could take off on you if you want. People could people could raise up on you, but I, I just I didn't. I was just like, what? Like, you, tell me it's not true. Like, you really can't fucking get yourself in fucking shape. Like, that's so sickening to me. That people's biggest problem that they think they have is to eat some healthy food and do a fucking workout. Like, that's really your biggest problem right now. But the the problem is, is that 
they really believe that one day they'll never have problems. That's our biggest problem. So the fact is, yeah, you got all these other issues, but the only way you solve the bigger ones is to solve the small ones and then come in with the strength from the small wins to then solve the big ones. I mean, it's about stress management. Like you're not going to be a CEO if you couldn't even handle your meals and your fucking workouts, you dumb motherfucker. Like how are you going to handle, how are you going to run all this if you couldn't even fucking manage your measly ass monthly income and, and eat your fucking meals and change your kids' diapers and fucking get into shape? Yeah, you're going to, you're going to fucking all of a sudden be paying 200 grand worth of bills a month and handling all this other shit that goes along with it. That's what you're going to do. You're just going to raise up to that because the money's there. No, it's just, it's who you become by handling small amounts of stress and saying, I can fucking do more until you're able to fucking handle the whole world and then some, which I didn't even get started. I didn't even fucking pace it myself yet. And I, the whole thing is, is, I don't give a fuck about me. And how do I not, how do I not tire? Is because every morning I wake up and I think, how can I best serve everybody today? I think about all those people who have a gun in their mouth the day before or today. And that if they see me get up again and I'm going through some shit, that they'll get up again too. I live in pain. I know pain. And that's why I'm able to heal people so well. These cupcake motherfuckers with their comfortable ass life, they're not able to heal somebody's pain. They're too comfortable. They've been too comfortable for too long. And they're just, they're way disconnected. There's no spiritual attachment to shit at that point. Yeah, man. Again, well, well, well said, man. Um, so tell me about your first, so when you get out of prison and the, you're out, and that wasn't that long ago, man, right? That was like, what, three years ago, maybe? Three years and like a couple of days, you know? So, like, how do you go from that first day? You have nothing on that first day where you get I out. I had two, $200 gate money. Okay. I bought a pair of Chuck Taylors and a gym pass. I said, watch this. Watch this. Okay, and then just walk me through it, man. So, like, you know. Bought a, bought a pair of Chuck Taylors and a gym pass and... um. Were you and living at home him. with your parents? I, was, like, I, I had to live with my grandma to be on parole. Okay. And I mean, I had nothing. Like literally, I slept on a twin bed in the same room with my parents and they had two dogs in there and I'm 30 fucking five and I'm sleeping in a twin bed with my parents at 35, just got out of prison with 200 bucks. And I just went to the gym every fucking day and posted on my Instagram every fucking day. I never missed a post. I never missed the wake up time. I didn't even sleep in the first day I got out. I haven't slept in past two, four, five, or 13 years. And the thing is, is I just built an unwavering motherfucker. I don't care what it is. I'm sticking to the plan. And that's all it takes. Like literally, you're going, success leaves clues. When you keep showing up, you're gonna see the ins and outs. Motherfuckers want the perfect plan on the first day. You'll never see it. Even if I gave you the perfect plan on the first day, my job as a coach is to talk you out of your bad plans because you're so fucking stupid. You're going to side with comfort all day long. Be like, no, but I heard from Dr. Oz that I'm overworking. I'm like, is he swole? Do you want to look like him? Like, trust exactly. me. You hired me. Trust me. And everyone on my program doesn't work out every day or most, they don't have to wake up at 245. But we set something that's difficult for them. And then we slowly step them up which is increasing their level of stress management so that they become someone who's not fucking, they just are weathered. They're impervious to defeat. I, I, I agree, man. And I agree. Dr. Oz is not swell. I, I don't even know who that is. I, just, I, I remember who he is, but yeah. I mean, the thing is, is people uh, like side with these shows and these people. I'm like, yeah, is that, you, is that what you want to look like? Yeah, no, totally, man. I absolutely 100%, man. I agree with that hundred percent. And it also goes to, you know, the people you want to surround yourself with or the people who you want to let infiltrate your mindset have to be people that you admire, have to be people that you want to be like. It can't, you know, like that's all that matters. Like, is that person walking the walk and are they living the lifestyle and that that you admire, that you want to be more like, that you respect? Because, you know, a lot of people are just following the wrong thing, man. Listen to the wrong people. And like, you know, also, a lot of people, a lot of negativity get into their mindset. They're hanging out with the wrong I mean, people. I, the, the world right now is a bunch of people creating negative scenarios, believing them and ruining their day. I'm like, is that what you did today? <laughs> That's what you did? You just made up some negative scenario, fully believed it and let it ruin your day? Holy shit. And it's just the, the only way to get them to break that is to give them a comfortable place to go every day to get these wins and to build themselves up. So that when it's all about discipline, 
you don't have all these problems. You have a discipline problem. When there's a choice between that positive thought that makes your day or that negative thought that ruins it, you keep choosing the negative one because you're not disciplined enough, not strong enough to choose the positive one. I'm so disciplined, I choose the positive one. Even though my life just was taken out from under me again, like two weeks ago. And I never missed a beat, never missed, you know, never missed anything that I have to do because it's not about me. I literally am living and doing all this for other people. I don't have to get up at 245 anymore. I don't have to diet this hard. I do it to show people that they have to build the strength because life is coming. Life is coming for you. And if you don't build the strength when everything is okay to build it, then when, the, when, the, when everything's pulled out from under you, you're going to be too weak to stand the fuck back up. Absolutely, man. Um, so did you have an Instagram account when you, did you make your Instagram account when you got out of jail? I made it in prison. I made it five, five years did? before I got out. I was already, I saw like people doing shit on Instagram in like 2014. I did a post. I said, I'm going to make millions off Instagram. I like this. And from then I would sit there and write my posts. And then when someone would drop the phone off in, in the pen, I would fucking have my post ready, have my hashtags ready, take my picture, post my shit. And uh, yeah, I mean, it just like, Oh really? Yeah, I, I fucking had that shit since like 2014. And I mean, I was always like, <laughs> what's going to happen from this? But I mean, in prison, you get like a night, you get like 90 days from getting caught with the phone. So I, they were like, hey, we know you have an Instagram account. I'm like, well, fuck, well, whatever. I mean, I've been down 10 years. I don't care about 90 days, you know, what the fuck? Like, whatever. Did you ever get in trouble? Did you ever get caught? Not with, not with the phone, right. but I got in trouble for like violent shit in prison where right. I caught like the highest yeah. charges. Yeah. You want to, I know that I know. Um, that's a well known. If anyone who follows you knows the crazy story, um, and then you basically spent 14 months in like basically solitary confinement, right? Yeah, the shoe, like, uh, if you've ever seen Shot Collar, like where they go to those cages and you have to work out in the dog kennels, and then you're in isolation, you have a celly, or sometimes you won't, and you're just being a cell by yourself, uh, 23 hours a day, and then every other day, or you, you come out shower every other day, and then uh, you get to go to the yard either once a day or every other day depending on how they're running it I mean, that's that but you just go out to a kennel and you just stand out there you get handcuffed everywhere you go and it ain't shit like none of it's shit like everything is what people make it in their perspective i found more i had better days in the shoe by myself than up here right now because the whole thing is is if you have if you have everything you you thought life was and then you have a low level a low personal development program it's not based on any spiritual development. It is actually worse because then you're sitting there like, what's wrong with me? You have no attachment to the shit because you thought you'd get everything that would make your life. And then it's not working because the only thing that works is attaching that flow state. It's suffering. It's realizing the pain of the world and overcoming it daily. That's why you have to starve. And, then, and an idiot's going to see this and be like, I'm going to fast for 10 days. It's like, no, make it fucking normal. Just eat just enough, like work out just to your capacity of what you could handle. Don't just kill yourself the first week and starve yourself and think you're going to fucking be enlightened. It's over a long period of time of just incrementally pushing yourself to where you're a weathered individual who will not even be broken by anything. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Again, stacking, stacking the little wins, man. Yeah, that's like the, sec base, that's the secret a, of life. I'm a base hit motherfucker. I'm, I'm not even yeah. trying to hit grand slams. I did put some money in Bitcoin the other day because everyone just harassed me about it. So I finally did. But I mean, I'm not even a grand slam dude. Like I'll stack slowly over time with the investment I know best, me. Yeah. Yeah, no, I love it. So when did, at what point did you start like monetizing your social media stuff? And when, when did you start your YouTube channel? Around the same time? Like when you came out? I don't out? know. Yeah, probably like uh, September 19 or something. Okay. Oh, you just started your YouTube channel. Not that long no, ago. Uh, 2019, like September. Okay. Okay. I cool. got like a hundred thousand subscribers in the first twenty days or something. That's crazy. I mean, I think you have like yeah. almost four hundred thousand. Yeah, something I got like three right? three sixty or something. But I mean, the thing is, is we this what it does is it works. It provides value, and that's my business model: is that we provide value on the front end in the sense that you're going to come want more of it. And that's what people don't do. They don't even. A lot of people are missing the whole point. Like they don't even tell their story. Nobody knows who they are, and they're telling people what to do. If people don't know who the fuck you are, you can't tell them what the fuck to do. Like, what the fuck? And yeah. a lot of people like go on Instagram and on these social media platforms and they're like, do this workout. Like, 
I don't know who you are. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? Don't tell me what to do, you know? But they just don't get it, you know? But whatever. That's why a lot of people just don't see how it all works. And I teach a lot of people how to optimize their social media. And I coach them into doing what I do. You know, I coach like that. I do mindset coaching. I do personal training type uh, fitness and nutrition. And it's all a mixture where we um, we work on all of it together in all my programs. It's, it's a mindset training and nutrition. And anybody who wants mindset training without training and nutrition, they're fucking idiot. Like literally the, the biggest fucking training you can have mindset wise is to go hungry and change your exterior. If you can sit there all day long and want something and withhold from it for an old, uh, a greater purpose, there's no greater mindset training than that. There's nothing greater, but these, these are like the intellectuals who want to get out of the actual work and think they're, they'll use their strength instead of focus on their weakness. Like I always tell people, laser focus on your weakness to level up. Fuck your strengths. You've been standing on them forever. It's like a lot of the top people I talk to, I'm like, what's your credo? And the dude will be like, make it happen. And I'm like, it sure looks like you're not making it happen in a bunch of areas to me, motherfucker. I'm like, so what? You're just using that credo to your one strength? Can you move on now? Can you move on from there? You got 50 million. I get it. You made it happen there. Why do you have this? Can you get rid of the tits? Okay. <laughs> and this, this is the problem. It's like, what the fuck? Move on. Like, you can't teach people from your strength to their weakness. Oh, yeah. Like, I'm like so rich and you don't got no money. Like, it's like, dude, this guy down here is ripped. He could be talking to you that way, but he's not. You're an idiot. Yeah. So we yeah. teach from, we, we teach both from our weakness. Like, I share my weakness with my people. And they share their weakness, and I show them how we're both working to bring up our weaknesses. Yeah. You know, I love that, man. You know, and I really, again, going back to like mindset and fitness stuff, it really, it, everything, like, like you said, and I love that line because I use it all the time. The way you do anything is the way you do everything. It's, it's so true. Like all aspects of discipline focus into every aspect of your life. You can't be attentive to detail one aspect of your life and sloppy in another. You can, but that's why most people kind of suck at a lot of things. <laughs> Like, you know, really in order to be operating on all cylinders, you have that attention to detail has to spill over into every Everything. aspect of your life, you know? Um, so just, there's a couple of things that are just like sort of practical things I want to talk to you about. Um, so just, at what at what point, because obviously, you know, you're living a, a baller lifestyle again. At, at what point did you start monetizing your social media? And, you know, did you have a mentor to help you do it? Or did you just kind of, you know, like- I, I figured everything out, but then I had a partner who knew about, um, optimizing uh, like views and likes and social media to turn it into a program. But I had already been doing the coaching right when I got out. I downloaded a training app. I was training people making like 3000 a month and just barely scraping by like some personal months, training. You're, doing, you're doing personal training o online though. I was making online. people's Mac. I was making people's macros to make them a training program and just doing it through Instagram. And then um, once my YouTube channel blew up, I automatically went from like, what you could max out sales with in a DM type scenario. So I would, I got like shit views overnight and I went from 3000 a month to how many people could I sign a day with my stupid ass fucking delivery and pitch that I didn't know I was doing wrong. And um, I just tell people 250 a month, like sign up, you know, and I'm not even like throwing them like you could sign up for a year or you have these other offers. I just didn't know yet. And so I probably lost 500 grand the first two months, you know? And then, um, so then, I'm making like 15 grand all of a sudden after my YouTube shit starts dropping and, and it's going good. And then all we've been doing is optimizing and, and uh, making sure we're cleaning up everything correctly now. And then, and then what people don't get is it takes capital. Like I run a hundred thousand dollars worth of ads a fucking month, you know, more 150,000 a month. And I mean, we get five on which, pla on which platforms on YouTube, Instagram, uh, or Facebook. All um, stuff? Yeah. Uh, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, uh, Google, and, um, and then we, we do email marketing. I mean, we, we hit everything. We, we, we spend the money to get it done. And so who's, uh, who's we, who's we, is that like, what's your team consist of right now? Uh, uh, one of my buddy that I, that actually did prison time too. Yeah. He did prison time and he studied, studied marketing under like the top people like Russell Brunson. Um, uh, what's his name? Um, Billy, Billy Jean. Um, he, he just studied all the people's systems that, that um, know how to do click funnels from, yeah. I mean, that's the problem with business. Like if I call a business and, and they don't fucking answer, I will never go there ever. I'm like, what the fuck, dude? I can't even get a reservation. I can't get someone on the phone when I break my phone. But with my system, you literally click on my website 
and you're like, I want to, this guy's shit's dope. Like I want to hop on his program. You click on it, you enter your shit and it comes through to my phone and I'm really texting you every day. People, this isn't really Wes. I, there, is this really Wes Watson? I'm like, is this really Todd Silverman? And the guy's like, oh, it probably is. I'm like, do you really have trust issues like that, Todd? You know, and it's like, but they're really talking to me. A lot of them don't believe they are. They think it's a yeah. bot or something. And you wouldn't believe how many people try to prove to a bot that it's a bot. <laughs> it's the craziest thing. I'm like, so wait, you had two options. Talking to the person that you want to work with that you do respect because they gave you some value and you're about to sign up. It could be them and you're about to disrespect them by calling them a bot. Or you're going to try to prove to a bot that you know it's a bot. And you chose that route. Okay. I think you do need, you, you you need, need more me. than coaching. <laughs> yeah, you need me bad. But anyways, um, yeah, we, you know, we'll go from cool. the web page and the content ads to you type in your name and it comes through on my phone and I really answer all the texts and then I really get on the phone if I need to, which I really don't because my leads come in hot. I've been grooming people for years with uh, them knowing through my Instagram transformations, everything I post that they're fucking ready because they are, they know their habits are keeping them where they're at. Yeah. I love that. You know, it's, it's, it's a great way to do it. I was actually talking to my videographer who you met briefly. You know, I had the, this weekend, my son's like Apple ID, like he bought a bunch of crap on like Roblox and his account got like blocked. So he couldn't do anything. And uh, I was like, you know, I was like, all right. So I got, I got on like Apple support and I was texting with them on my phone. And like, again, of course my natural instinct is like, oh, this is going to suck. Like it's going to basically outsource the support. I'm not going to get anything that I need, but it ended up actually being like, on the other side of things and you know within like five minutes my problem is solved whereas if i call like at&t or like use you know text with them it's always some bullshit customer service experience where my problem isn't solved like what you do basically is you use technology to actually make a experience more efficient and personal which is that's the secret right there you know it's not like people naturally assume it's a bot and it's some like you know basically a way to avoid interacting with a human, but the way you do it is actually the right way to do it. It's the right way to actually build a business. You're basically oh, I, using- I, I love it. Like I, yeah. I literally, I, I'm putting, if I, ha if I don't put my energy across, they don't notice it correctly. So I, I make sure that they're, everything's gotta be authentic and brand yeah. specific. So totally. I, I just, I, I'm just a believer in authenticity and being brand specific. I could step out of it. Million people approach me every day. Hey, do you want us to control your sales team? Yeah, well, da, 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 da. I'm like, I just, I do it. I like it. Like, I mean, yeah. I like my business. I like what I do. And uh, then we sign them up. We make them a, a program on my training app. And we're on Zoom calls every weekend. Or if they're a, a elite level client, we're on personal calls one-on-one. -on -one. But if they're on the group level, we're in a group together. I mean, it's just massive. People are changing their lives so drastically. So again, one of the things I spoke about earlier is, you know, the difference between what you do and then with like what other fitness professionals do, and especially like sort of this similar sort of model where it's an, like an online app based training regimen is you're like really building people from the inside out. It's not like building people's physique and then, you know, they're kind of having their mindset. Well, you got to teach, you got to teach the way you learned. I get so yeah. mad at some of my trainer friends. One of them's an Olympic athlete. And he trains his people so soft. I'm like, why don't you talk to them how you spoke to yourself when you got that medal, motherfucker? I'm all, you're not even talking. You want their check, you asshole. You want the money. You're not even teaching them. You're not grooming them, right? You're not giving him your self-talk that got you the medal. You're, you're afraid to talk to him that way so you because you might miss the check. That's your fucking problem. You're, you're placating him. And the thing is, that's not what works. You have to you have to be their internal dialogue because they don't have it at the start. So your self-talk, your internal dialogue, your core values and principles become theirs because they saturate, they're around you. And the thing is, if yours are soft, your client's not gonna do good. So I don't let that happen. And I, I continually see people do it because they sell out for the money. They're too scared to talk to their clients how they need to be spoken to because they're not aware enough to say, oh, my self-talk was way intense, way savage when I won that rowing medal, you know, like they're just like, they don't even know themselves well enough to know that their internal dialogue was a precursor to their actions and their actions got them the medal. They're literally like just oblivious to it all. Yeah. Yeah. You're right, man. I mean, that's the way you really, you have to level up.
like the way you people have to level up the way you leveled up if they're signing up to your programs, you know, and that's, and that's what you're helping people do. Um, just a couple of other just practical things. Uh, obviously, your macros are dialed in. I mean, you're hot, hot, like what, what's like your weight and height? Just curious. Like six foot, like 240. Six foot, so 240. We, 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 stay, we stay pretty lean. Not, not the oh, best yeah. lighting, but what? I, I, it's, it's coming through, man. I see it. Yeah, yeah but uh, I mean, yeah, I, I so stay by, like 6%, 7% body fat year round. So Most you, I, I, I stay single digit year round. So you have to be what you eat about like 240 grams of protein, I would say, right? Or no? I, I eat, I literally eat a diet that nobody should eat. I eat all carnivore and then carb cycle. Like, so basically I eat, I eat a carnivore diet. Nobody should eat like me. Like don't, I would, yeah, suggest someone, not- I would suggest someone eats like me once they have like the size they like and they're lean, which is far down the road. And um, so I basically eat carnivore and then I carb cycle for size if I get too like wiry and, and thin. But um. The main thing is, is like, I do you carb cycle. Sorry, Wes. Do you carb cycle on a weekly type basis? Like where you're no carbs a couple of days. And I, then I like just an have a couple of carbs or. Okay. I just do it Got intuitively. It. Like when I'm getting way deflated, then I just, I carb up the night before and then I go in and I'll, I'll you know, I'll, my dermis will shrink. I'll be, I'll be real lean. I'll, everything will be sucked down and then I'll, I'll restore, restock my glycogen storage. I'll drink a lot of water. I'll have extra salt. The next day I'll come in and people are like, damn, did you gain like two pounds a night? And it's, I know how to, I know how to manipulate macronutrients and right. my body and other people's bodies. That's why I get, I, I get arguably the best transformations in the game. Like yeah. people are like, them. they're like, how are these people looking like this? I'm like, because we know what we're doing. Like, yeah. how do you have such trust issues? You know, it's, it's 299 pesos a month. Like, are you serious? Are you wouldn't even believe how many people like live a, a horrific existence because of their body and they won't even come off 300 bucks a month to change their life if it's going to take them three months. It's like you. So wait, I know you would pay uh, 2 dollars a month for, for three months if I just snapped my fingers and gave you the body. But since you got to do the work, there's a problem or what? You know, but yeah, it's, I mean, I actually have so many people that do so well. I'm so proud of them. It's crazy. Like some of my guys are just they they come up with stuff the way they write, who they become. It's just massive. Dude, my mom is not understanding that I called her before this podcast to tell her not to call me. And she has called me 9,000 times. <laughs> my mom does the same thing. Yeah. Like she's, she's I, I know she's like the worst. She has such anxiety. She's like, what happened? I'm like, dude, like I, I called you before this to tell you I was going to be on something for two hours. I'll, I'll, I'll let you get off to call your mom soon, man. But I, I got I to gotta keep you here for a little longer. Um, so, like, our again, not to get – because I love, like, this stuff. I love, like, you know, macronutrient breakdown. Best. and Like, I'm it's really, best. like, I, I obsess over it. And you know, I literally will eat the same shit day in and day out, too. Like, you know, my wife will be like, your diet is so boring. But, like, for me, it's not. Like, that's just what I need to do. It's fuel to, like, you know I – live, I live my life as a voyeur. I live from the mental witness. I don't even exist where everybody exists. I live in the back of my head. I watch myself operate or I'm sitting in a chair in the top corner of this room and I'm watching myself operate. I'm void of feeling in the task that needs to be done, especially if it's difficult. Now, this is where people fuck up. They're eating their food and they're in there. They're like, oh, this tastes good or not. I'm sitting in the back corner of the room like, yeah, get that shit. This is taking you exactly where you wanna go. I'm sitting there, my biggest advocate from the top, oh, who gives a fuck what that tastes like? They can't do what you do. They ain't gonna be like you. And my self-talk is just so affirming that stay this course, this is gonna get you what you wanna be. And I, I'm just my biggest fan up in the top corner. When these people are like, oh, this workout's really, it hurts me. You can't be attached to it. Like you have to you have to remove yourself. And that's the problem is I do life at Voyeur. So, I mean, that's what I had to do in prison. Like you can't just live every day in prison. You can't just, wake up and be in prison like people do that and they just go crazy and they use drugs and that's why everybody's so locked into their immediate life they're not looking at life as a whole one big story like that's why crazy events can happen to me like and i'm like oh the story's gonna be so good it's a big story like yeah we're let's make this shit grand you know and it's just a different way of living life and it's it's orchestrating not being a victim you know yeah, man. And Absolutely. I run my business like that. I run my business yeah. above it. I'm not, I, I do work in the business in the aspects that I like, 
the aspects I don't get, I don't touch. I don't under, I don't even try to understand them. I'm like, oh no, hey, you know. And then I, the stuff that I'm orchestrating is working way above the business and all the stuff that people aren't going to see. Vision is knowing exactly what's going to take place way before anyone believes that it'll ever even take place. I, I can see exactly what you could be at your highest potential from right here with everything I can do for you. I can see that in everybody. And that's why I get so frustrated with them because I know what they can be. And I'm sitting there like, why the fuck are you choosing to be this? They don't even see what I'm seeing. And I'm like, what the fuck is this? Like, what? This is what you've done? Like I did this in three years and this is what you did? What the fuck? Come over here. Let's go. Yeah, man. That's it. That's why people, that's why people are signing up for your programs, man. Because um, they, don't, they don't see it. Like I, if I didn't get all tattooed, get put all this work in, change my, I'd be like a pale fat dude with like a bunch of black chest hair, look like shit, feel like shit, be all subdued, not confident. And literally it would be horrible. And there's people out there who really think, they're a victim because who they are. It's like, no, you're lazy, motherfucker. You have no vision and you're lazy. So let's get you not lazy and let me be the crutch to your vision because I see what you can be. Yeah, I mean, I imagine a lot of people that do your programs, you know, do those few months and then they kind of like that that internal fire goes off in them. And then they're kind of like just set out into the world because they have that, you know, the sort of that dog mentality that, you know, the yeah. that lion's mindset, which is great. You know, it's not like, you know, you're basically igniting that fire in somebody so that they can carry that torch forward. Um, you mentioned your ink, man. You have like a lot of really, really, like really beautiful tattoos. Are those all done in the last three years or did you have like a lot of ink or before prison? Most, or of was, most prison? was done in prison. Really? So like my, yeah, most was done in prison, like my neck, my whole shirt. I'm like fully covered armpits, hold back. But uh, there's some like bigger pieces on, that I got before prison, but only after prison, I, I literally got like one tattoo. Wow. Okay, it's like pretty intricate stuff, man, that you have. I just went like a good and evil theme. Like uh, I just was, uh, at this time in my life, I was like, I was just torn between. I just, I was always torn between. I knew I was a good dude deep down, but I was just doing stupid shit and like, like believing that I was tough and hard and like, uh, like just taking the easy way out, which was negative attention. It's so easy to get negative attention. It's like cry for help from like a fat little 14 year old. You know? And that's what these dudes look like to me. It's like, that's what you're doing. Like that's a cry for attention, you fat little bitch, you know? And it's just like, why don't you be a real fucking man, wake up and pay your fucking bills and put the drink down. dude. And it's like, guess what? It's not going to play out for 10 years. You still game or what? Guess what? It ain't gonna, you ain't gonna get your way for 13 years. Are you still down? Yeah. Because guess what? The real motherfuckers, they take pride in the steps that they take to attain the result over the result itself. I take more pride in my wake up time than my fucking Lambo. I don't give a fuck. Like, I'm gonna be up. I don't give a shit if I got one hour or no hours. I'm posting that post in the morning because I said I would. You know? Yeah, that's trust in the process and, you know, being accountable just, to yourself. Just, your word above all, like, absolutely. Fuck man. me, I don't absolutely. give a shit about how much sleep I get. I told everybody I get up at this time. Done. You know, yeah. people go tell their whole family how they're about to change the game and it's going to be a dry January and they're going to get all ripped this year. Two weeks in, they fucking tap out on the word. That shit's sickening. Like yeah. you devalue your word and take all the power every time you tell a lie. You know. Very true, man. Very true, and that yeah, it, it, that's absolutely right, man. Um, so I, I just, I mean, I don't know. If this is something... I wrote a quote sitting on my rack a long time ago. I was looking out in the day room, and I'm just sitting on my rack, and I put earplugs in when I'm in prison because I don't want to hear their fucking shit. And I got the block. I'm the, I'm the dude, you know. Like people have to come up to me to ask me shit, and I'm sitting there, and I'm watching these guys all just tell themselves fucking stories that aren't true. And I just said their words fell on deaf ears due to lack of veneration, you know. And it's just like they were just like I'm like I don't even hear you guys. You guys just you guys just don't even live it, you know, like there's no, it was just, it was just so much, so much to see of what not to be, you know, and there's so much in society to see what not to be. And I did, I tell people, let's create that rare man, you know, that rare mm -hmm. man that you don't even believe could exist. Yeah. I mean, listen, man, I, I, I couldn't agree with you more, man. Um, I kind of like touching on that a little bit. I don't know if this is something you want to talk about and we don't have to, we could skip bypass this, but I know like you mentioned a couple of weeks ago, you had like a big, you know, like a life sort of life altering event and sort of like, you know, so, some bad stuff happened, but like, you know, you still maintained your focus and, you know, you got your daily wins and for whatever you're, you know, you're, you're 
long-term goals and also just to be accountable to yourself and you know all of the people who look to you for guidance um i mean could you, would you mind talking about yeah that it's, i've talked about it on my youtube i just i'm not gonna blame nobody or nothing but the thing is is uh i worked for 13 years to be a father and to be a husband and i, I was creating this individual that i love i was so proud of to just give it to someone and it didn't go it didn't go wasted because i can give it to someone else but um I created this individual I was so proud of. I was I was as solid as you could be. And then, um, you know, the other the other person in the relationship uh, had real demons and real issues, and uh, they did something that was something we could come back from as a couple. And I had to cut it that day. And uh, it, you know, I I I, I love the I I love my stepson and, and my and my ex wife more than anything. But um, I uh, just I couldn't come back from something that happened. And um, you know, I. I you know, I, I've, I've moved on since then and it's been very quickly and people are just like, how do you move on so quick? And it's like, because I didn't, I, I was a great man in the relationship and I, I didn't need to go sit down and be alone and find myself, you know, and it's just, um, I really just don't listen to people in, in aspects when it comes to my personal life or anything like that. I don't care to take losses. People see that as a big loss. I see it as a huge gain. It's just all wins, you know. The biggest, the worst thing that ever happened was that 10 year prison sentence. And it turned out to be my biggest asset. So is this, I mean, I worked 13 years to become and be something that, uh, and create this vision. That was my, it was my heart and soul and everything that meant everything to me. And, uh, it just got taken away uh, right in a one, in a moment's notice about three weeks ago. And I still never missed a beat. And, um, I still won't. And that's what it comes down to. Who's, who's, yeah. who's, who are you when life's really difficult? Who are you when it's really bad? And I mean, I'll just continually prove it. I just saw it as a, as the perfect proving grounds to show everybody what's possible. Anybody going through something similar to just step up and never give up. Yeah. I, I really admire that, man. And, uh, you know, I think it's something everyone, we all can learn from, you know, and, and I think a lot of, the reason why you were able to sustain like a loss like that, or like, you know, like a, a personal blow is because you have a process in life that you follow, you know, and oh, if, if I don't go into that process, I will just start creating all the worst scenarios in my head right. and they'll eat my heart alive. I'll, be, I'll remember old events. I'll be like, Oh, this must've been happening. And the thing is, is I'm putting all my energy into creating the future. I desire no negative energy, nothing towards the person. The pain we give others is what we feel. So I feel no, I, I have no regrets. I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything that the pain that they're feeling is what they did to you. And the pain you feel is what you did to them. And it's what we give is what we get. So I, I actually pretty fine about it all because I reached out to my stepson's father and said, anything you guys need, the answer is yes. And um, through the court type of situation, we have no contact with the, uh, uh, each other, me and my ex-wife, but, um, you know, I, I just give nothing but love and, um, and understanding to her. I don't want her to be in any more pain than she's in. And, and, uh, if she knows the pain I'm in, then, um, then that's too much for her to even be experiencing. And I, I hope maybe she's using the process that I taught for so long that, uh, to get herself through it. But as of now, I don't know. I, I've yeah. cut all ties, you know? Yeah. Well, I mean, I think everything you said, man, is just so spot on. I mean, I just want to close with just a few things, man. So there's like these quotes. I was listening to some of your podcasts and your content. You have all these like killer quotes. I mean, you have like a million of them from here that are just like incredible. But uh, I just want to go through. I was going to read a couple of them, man. And then I want you to just kind of wax poetic. Oh, that's awesome. It. All right. Perfect. All right. So, so wait, this is one of the first one. People are looking for happiness in the same place. They're losing it. I, I love oh, that's that. all they're doing. Yeah, all, all week they're like, oh, I got to go drink. I got to go drink. It's going to be so awesome. And they're looking for this happiness in the same place they consistently lose. Then they go drink. They end up in the gutter throwing up. They get a fucking DUI and they're like, oh. And then next week they do it again. You know, it's just the dumbest shit. Like, you got to learn your, to find your happiness through delayed gratification and accomplishing big goals. Like, and people are like, think my life is like so strict and it can't be fun i'm like um it's pretty fun buying a lamborghini cash it's pretty pretty fun you know it's pretty fun when your people you know want to go do something and it's oh yeah we can totally go do that or it's pretty fun when your family needs help with something and it's no sweat off your back to do it to it for them you know it's all pretty fun yeah yeah i, mean, I love that and, and that's something i you know i think is 
it's really the case now with like social media and just everything. Like, you know, you see all this, you know, people with all the bling on Instagram, but like a lot of people don't see the work that goes behind it. Right. So when you, I just saw like, you posted something under, with your ro- they right. really don't understand how businesses work either. I mean, if you have a fucking internet business that brings in five to seven fucking million and you don't have that many employees, well, Jesus, you're going to have to have some write-offs. I mean, vehicles are prime write-offs in that aspect and they become a business asset. I mean, essentially you'd want to grow the business, but if you're throwing 400,000 at something that's not going to grow when you could just pay the tax on the 400 and come out of pocket 180 and uh, essentially what you're doing to grow wasn't spot on and you weren't for sure about it, enjoy a damn vehicle. You know, people just don't get how the corporate world works. I mean, 6,000 pound vehicles are complete business write-offs. That's why Amazon probably gets Sprinter Mercedes vans because over time they're just better bigger write-offs that's, that liquidate at a higher value. I mean, it's just people don't understand business. They're talking about from their end, but from the other end as an S-Corp, it's completely different and they just don't get it. So it's just like, hey, um, you don't know what you're talking about. So have a good day. <laughs> yeah, so the, less, the, less, the take the home message year, from that at, is. Yeah, at the end of the uh, year, so uh, what's his name? Uh, Grant Cardone's like, damn, I owe 50 million. And he, and he gets a jet, you know I mean? At the end of the year, you're like, fuck, I. I'm kind of overboard. I didn't expense enough, you know? And so, you, you know, it's just business expenses that, that you live off of yeah. during your, with your business. Take home message by vehicles that are over 6,000 pounds. Yeah, <laughs> basically, I mean, all, all mine, uh, they fit that, you know? All right. Um, next one is a lot of people blame internal issues on internal problems on external issues. I think we talked about a lot about well, they're, that. Well, they're, they're looking for, they're looking for in, they're looking for external solutions to internal issues. So, I mean, I do that. And then I realize every time that it's, it's food, you know, but I, I would really, I made the only way I'd probably overeat my carbs or something on a day. And I'm like, oh, I'm paying for it. But uh, most people are trying to solve internal problems with vices. You know, they're just, they're drinking, they're overeating, they're taking pills. And they're not solving their internal issues that are coming from low self-worth, low self-esteem, low self-image. And I mean, the only way to bring that up is to truly be congruent with the actions that you want to, you want to embody. That's it, man. It all needs to line up. Uh, goodness doesn't flash. It glows. That goodness is uneventful. It, it does not flash. It glows. That one, that one's awesome. Okay, so we finished with goodness doesn't flash it close. Here's the next one. Do people walk away from an interaction with you better off or worse off? Like, I love that. You said that in one of the- Yeah, so I, mean, I mean, that that's, I like literally base my life on that. I love meeting people in the elevators. I, I just, I'm trying to give them as much value as possible in the most, in the shortest amount of time. Anytime I'm around people, I'm trying to just elevate them. That's like creating assets, not liabilities. But like I yeah. said, I'll go out in the, in the in the world right now. I'll just go somewhere- and I'll come across someone and I'll give them massive value. People don't speak how we speak. So it's basically like, it's new to them. They're like, what did you say? Like, what do you do? Like, what is this? And um, that's why I like the tools, like the cars and the way you look and your body. And like people, re- they respond to different things about you. You got to open their eyes before they listen. You know, you, you have to get them looking before they open their ears and fully absorb what you're saying. Because who are you teaching if not? If you don't use those tools to teach the superficial people and to become what they need to see that that, so that you can open their ears, then you're only teaching the the 1% of people who've sought so much growth that they know it's not about the money and it's not about the looks. It's like, how are you doing society as a whole justice if you're not catching their attention and then diverting it to the real truth and the real honesty? That's where everybody messes up. Most intellectuals, they talk a big game and you flip their book over and you're like, oh man. Yeah, that's it, man. Um, it's about energy exchange, positive vibration. You talk a lot about that. You know, the, the op- yeah, del- delivery is d- delivery is insignificant. So I mean, a lot of people, some people who don't understand the energy exchange and how they feel, they're watching my content and be like, "Oh my god!" Like that was so abrasive, and they're going by society standards of what should be said and done. But the real people that are part of my program and yourself and these other individuals who have a high level of personal development and uh, personal growth, they're like, oh, that made me feel a certain way. So the way you make someone feel is what matters and delivery is insignificant if it's aligned with and genuinely honest. 
Absolutely, man. And the last one is but they made up those they made up those societal standards to keep people from being powerful like that because it puts like a shield right there, like oh he said this, it's done, or he looks this way, it's done, and uh, that's what people that's that's what people don't get. They're falling victim to that. Yeah, no, I, I think you're absolutely right, man. Um, and the last one is uh, people are either inspired or intimidated. Now, I, I want to preface this by saying it was in a podcast. I, I forget who it was with, man, but it was, uh, it was a guy was basically saying how if he saw you, like if he heard your message five years ago, he would have been very intimidated, you know. But th that same guy, because of whatever personal development he's gone through, he sees your message now and he's inspired by it. He not, not like, again, like you're uh, it, like objectively an intimidating dude like you're jacked you get tattoos you know you're successful and it's easy to see that right but that's the best really, part because you, you the best part is you create that and then the contrast is when they meet you you purposely go out of your way to do so much for them and give them so much value and they automatically feel special they feel enlightened they're like whoa this person is obviously doing something at a high level and they see something in me and that's, that's the best thing we could do. You know? Absolutely. And the best part about it is that they, they see something in you that's hiding inside of them, you know, and that's, what's inspiring. You know, like, you know, you're a guy who's been through it and, you know, and uh, you're honest and you share your story, even, you know, things that are happening in your life now. And, you know, I, as a human really appreciate it, man. I really appreciate your message. They got to, there's about. other people, there's, there's other people who want to die today from the same thing that I just overcame. And if I could yeah. give 10 of them strength to make it through the day, that's what it's all about. I remember those days in my cell where just skimming through a quote book, just reading one quote gave me a break of just this and just agonizing pain in my chest and gave me the clarity to just be able to go to sleep and make it through these painful thoughts I was having. And I can read people's self-talk from like a mile away. I know what they're saying to themselves. I know how they're treating themselves. And I'm like, regardless like i'd rather have you be negative and speak like that to me than speak to yourself that way like i could take it you obviously can't you know and the thing yeah. is is they i just we're gonna teach them that it starts with their their self-talk and then it goes into their actions and i mean it, the whole thing is how do we feel at the end of the day and um how do we affect others and it, it the language of the universe is energy exchange so at the height of everything how did you make someone feel delivery is insignificant Absolutely right, man. I think that's a good place to close, man. Uh, you you're leaving awesome. me, you're leaving me feeling inspired, man, which I love. That's what we do. I mean, I, in all reality, that's what brought me from where I was to where I am today is that constant drive to get up and make it happen. And what people need is to be inspired to make it happen every day. They just need that. A lot of people think they got it. Like a guy in the elevator the other day said, um, he's like, Oh, well, they asked what I do. Cause I'm coming down from the top floor and I look a certain way or whatever. And he's like, um, He's all, oh, like, uh, what do you do? And I tell him, and he's like, well, shouldn't like that personal growth stuff be kind of obvious? I said, well, then why aren't you ripped? Why aren't you ripped? And he's like, oh, and I'm like, why? And he's like, uh, I'm like, because it's just some knowledge that you have to attain. Why are you blocking yourself from getting it? I'm like, you don't want to look like that. And he was just like, and I'm like, exactly. I mean, so just to level up your life in all areas, everybody doesn't realize how dishonest and how selfish they are by making their own people compromise their integrity and lie to them. If you just fall off with your body or your health or who you are and with your character uh, and you make your people co-sign on you and be like, oh yeah, there's my fat ass dad who's just fucking gave up or they're, they're, they, they, you know, it, it's the worst thing you could do. You're, you're making them lie to you. Like instead of just not being so lazy and understanding that all this shit's very easy and the knowledge is all out there. That's it. And you're giving it to the people. I just break it down way deeper. Like they'll yeah. be like, oh no, I'm just overweight because this happened. No, you're an asshole and you're lazy. And uh, I got the answer. I mean, you can, you can critique people as much as you want and criticize as much as you want, as long as you provide the solution. If you don't provide, provide the solution, you're an asshole and you're just criticizing. If you can provide the solution to them, it's constructive. Man, I, I, I couldn't agree. I think that's so well said, man. You're right. You know, that's what it is. And uh, sometimes that honest truth, it's 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 painful when you hear it. But if someone's providing you with a solution and a way out, then it's incredibly empowering. Right. I want them to be more. I, I see more in them. I'm actually their biggest fan. I'm like, I see more in you than you do. I respect you more than you do. I have more faith in you than you do.
I love it, man. I'm borderline Bless. pissed off that you're where you're at. <laughs> hey, man, brother, thank you so much for your time, man. I, this, I think this is going to really touch a lot of people in a positive way, my man. Awesome, bro. Thank you so much. Made my day.